Mr. Topsy Turvey was a funny sort of fellow. Everything about him was either upside down or inside out, back to front, topsy turvy, in fact. It was all very extraordinary. To give you some idea of how topsy turvy Mr. Topsy turvy was, you ought to see his house. The front door is upside down to start with, and the curtains hang upside down at the windows. And just look at that chimney pot. All very extraordinary. Inside is the same. Just look at that clock standing on Mr. Topsy Turvey's mantelpiece. Isn't that the topsy turviest clock you've ever seen? And just look at the way Mr. Topsy Turvey reads a book. Not only does he read it upside down, but, but he starts to read it at the back page. And just look where Mr. Topsy Turvey puts the stamp and he sends a letter to somebody. Have you ever seen anything like it? Now, this story is all about the time Mr. Topsy Turvey came to the town where you and I live. Nobody's quite sure how Mr. Topsy Turvey got there or where he came from. But he did arrive because somebody saw him getting off the train. The trouble was, he did it in a topsy-turvy way. Which really isn't all that surprising, is it? Mr. Topsy-turvy went to a hotel to find a room to spend the night. The hotel manager tried not to smile when he saw Mr. Topsy-Turvey walk into his hotel carrying his suitcase upside down and with his Topsy-Turvey hat on his head. Good afternoon, sir, he said. Can I help you? Now, something you didn't know about Mr. Topsy-Turvey is the way he speaks. You see, he sometimes gets things the wrong way round. Afternoon good said Mr. Topsy-Turvey to the hotel manager. I'd, uh, I'd room alike. The manager scratched his head. He, you mean you'd like a room, he asked. Uh, please, yes, replied Mr. Topsy-Turvey. Eventually, the hotel manager managed to work out what Mr. Topsy-Turvey was talking about, and he was taken up in the lift to a bedroom. Then Mr. Topsy Turvey unpacked a suitcase, put on his pajamas, and went to bed. He was rather tired after travelling from wherever he'd come from. The following day, Mr. Topsy Turvey went round the town. But what a fuss his going round the town caused! He took a taxi from the hotel. But so confused the taxi driver trying to tell him where he wanted to go. The four men drove straight into a traffic light. Oh, dear, said Mr. Topsy-Turvey. I am sorry, Barry. Then he went into a big department store in the middle of the town. Walked up to one of the counters. I'd like a sock of pears, he said to the lady behind the counter. You mean a pair of socks, she smiled. And showed him a pair of bright red socks. Mr. Topsy-Turvey put them on his hands. <laughs> then he tried to leave. But being Mr. Topsy-Turvey, he tried to walk down the up escalator, and all the people who were going up the up escalator all fell over themselves. Oh, it was a terrible Topsy-Turvey jumble. That day, Mr. Topsy-Turvey did all sorts of Topsy-Turvey things. gallery and insisted on hanging all the pictures upside down so that he could look at them properly. 
And then, after Mr. Topsy-Turvy had been in the town for just one day, he disappeared. Nobody knew how he went, or where he went, but he certainly went because he wasn't there anymore. The whole town breathed a sigh of relief. But what the town discovered, even though Mr. Topsy-Turvy had left, was that everything was still topsy-turvy. Read all it about, shouted Late the newspaper final. sellers. Instead of shouting, read all about it. News is the here, <laughs> said the television newsreader. Instead of saying, here is the news. Morning good, people started saying to each other when they met him. Do do you how, instead of how do you do. Every, everybody was talking topsy-turvy. <laughs> now can you think of something to say that's, that's topsy-turvy? Try on, go. I mean, go on, try.